News Talk Radio 710 KNUS introduces the Private Label University, the only show that dares to unlock the secrets to your online selling success so you can start making money and living your dreams. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. With over 35 years of sourcing, private labeling, and importing products for the big chain stores and coaching thousands of entrepreneurs, all while building their personal businesses, let's welcome our private label university hosts, the fabulous, lovable, and cutest dynamic duo, Karen and Neil Gwartzman. So welcome to the private label university at 710 KNUS. We are your hosts, Karen and Neil Gwartzman, and this is where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. So visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com where we offer a ton of free content and where you will find our eight-week import success formula program. The formula to sourcing and importing products so you too can start selling products on Amazon or online and start making the money that everyone is talking about. And while you're over there on our website, leave us a message or a question and we'll answer it on the show. So we love to start off each show with an amazing Amazon find. We help so many entrepreneurs source and import products so that they can sell them on Amazon, but we too love to shop on Amazon. So Neil, what amazing find did you find this week? Well, this week was a very productive week. I was looking for something because I do a lot of traveling, and when I travel, I carry a journal, and I'm doing a lot of journaling and writing notes in, but I also started taking up sketching, and I like to sketch and paint. And if I'm on a flight that's 8, 10, 15, 24 hours, um, I want to keep you know my time occupied. So I found this little item called the Whiskey Painter Pocket Palette. A bit of a tongue twister there. but And how convenient. And on an airplane, you can get those little bottles of whiskey yeah, and you add can, to your palate. And add is to that, the palate. Is that what that's about? Well, that, it turns out that's what the history of the item was about. It was, it was uh, with reference to these group of guys, uh, corporate guys who would hang out uh, after work, and they'd go to a bar or they meet in a local pub, And one of them who liked to sketch and paint, he was one of the graphic designers of the company, would pull out this little palette out of his pocket. Pocket and A pocket palette. And it had little trays in that filled with paint. And he would start painting. They all sit around. So a lot of them got into it, even some of the the members who weren't uh, painters or artists, and they just start sitting there painting. So they called it the whiskey painter because they'd all have drinks. And Mm -hmm. if they didn't have a glass of water, they would sometimes just dip their brush into the whiskey. There you go. There you go. Hence the whiskey uh, painter pocket palette. So in any case, I ordered one. It was uh, quite inexpensive. Again, an Amazon find. It came in a couple days. It was only $24.99. It was, it's real solid. It's a little, about two inches by three inches. And it's a metal palette. And you open it up and it has these tiny little trays that you can either fill or I guess buy these pre-filled watercolor cakes, they call them, and put it inside. And it even came with a tiny little brush and this little water holder, which was really nice with a little cap. A so, whiskey holder. Or a whiskey holder. So <laughs> if you go traveling, you just ask for a little you know, bit of water, and it gives you something to mix with. So really, really handy. Um, for anyone who does a lot of traveling like I do, uh, if you're an artist on the go, they have these you know, people called plein air painters who go out in the fields and mm-hmm. on little journeys through the Amazon and paint. Um, this is just really handy, and it actually fits in your pocket, whether it be front, back, or, or coat pocket. Uh, very handy. And you don't need water because if you bring a dry brush, you can, of course, whether you're on a bus or a train or an airplane, you can always get a little glass of water. So really, really nice. Um, check it out on Amazon, the Whiskey Painter Pocket Palette. Uh, and again, it was twenty four ninety nine. So a great find this week mm-hmm. on Amazon. I love that. I love that. So we'd love to hear from you. So tell us about some of the amazing Amazon finds that you found. So visit us over on our website at www.privatelabeluniversity.com. When you get there, leave us a message and tell us what you found on Amazon, and we'll talk about it on the show. And while you're over there on our site, check out our freebie tab. You'll find a ton of information and free classes that will get you started to private labeling products so you can start selling them on Amazon and making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And we can start looking and buying them. Exactly. And we're all (laughs) always looking for new products we're always making sure that people are sending us products so um, you know whatever you find we have interest in it absolutely so today we're going to focus on branding and branding is so important because it, it represents really everything about a business it encompasses so many things like customer service which mm-hmm. we talked about before mm-hmm. um, yeah you know liability re- yeah you know branding is, is such an important part of uh, not just commerce, just business in general. So whether you have a brick-and-mortar store or you're starting a physical product business, um, really branding is what you have to look at if you're going to be even more successful and make more money. Um, you know, as Karen mentioned, 
Customer service, uh, which we talked about, part of your brand. Do you get customer service when you walk in that specific brick-and-mortar store or an online site? Uh, the reliability, you know, which is based on, of course, usually consumer feedback and social proof and testimonials, I mean, the uh, brand, reviews. Right. I mean, the brand represents you. It resent, represents your company. It represents everything, everything. Right. The product, you know, they, they and, really look at And same with trust and loyalty. You know, when you see a good brand and you know that you've had a good experience, then you trust that brand. Uh, you become loyal to the brand. So when you're branding something, you want to introduce more products, which then in turn brings on more customers because even if you have a product – uh, which isn't for, you know, it's for one main audience, but then you come up with another, you know, uh, accessory product. It's for another audience. And so that uh, trust and loyalty really follows when you build a brand. And it also holds a huge financial, it builds financial value. So people who have a brand, uh, that builds up the value if they ever want to sell the company or they're selling off part of the brand or the brand name or the brand logo. You know, look at all the big corporate mm -hmm. brands out there like McDonald's, you know, the Golden Arches. So it's a recognition. Starbucks. You recognize, you know, when you don't need to see the words or the name of the company, you just recognize symbols. Or right. Even if you can't read the words, you can see that Golden Arches from a distance. And it means something. That's it, brand. Right. And from that branding, of course, like we just brings in the trust, the loyalty, the reliability, the customer service. You know what that experience is going to be like. And I remember uh, I was working out in uh, uh, Czech Republic and I was outside of Prague and I remember um, visiting, you know, I, I was looking for, I was in a town called Czech Bujovic and I, I was looking for a place to eat and I was really hungry and I could see in the distance the golden arches. And from those golden arches, I thought, okay, I don't know where else to go. I was there. I know what to expect in McDonald's. It was actually, a, you know, a similar menu. So again, um, seeing that, uh, knowing the customer service, I, have, I recognized it. And also, you know, a lot of times when you're building a brand, uh, it inspires uh, people to work there. You know, people see if they know True. a good brand name or they know it's a nice place to work because people work there that uh, have given good reviews about being an employee there. Um, it inspires employees, and that also helps, of course, build up your brand. And um, your audience. I mean, it builds up your audience. I well, mean, and, and, and it helps the company figure out who that audience is. Right. It, it really generates the customers. Look at Apple. You know, when you walk into an Apple store, you know you're going to get typically good service, uh, you trust the product. You become loyal to the product. Look at those Apple people. You know, they're so loyal to any Apple. Apple. <laughs> they're so loyal to all <laughs> Apple products. And every time they come up with a new product or they're going to mention a new product, they're lining up. And they don't even know what it is. They don't Apple. know what it is. <laughs> exactly. It could be a watch band. But the thing is, you know what you're going to get because right. it's Apple. Right. And the symbol is, you know, it's well known. I mean, even when, I, do you remember, I, was, I use Brayden a lot, uh, we talk a lot about it on the show, but our, our, our both our kids, Brynn and Brayden, it was so funny, I remember going through Cherry Creek Mall and they were in strollers mm -hmm. and they weren't really, ta they didn't talk, um, you know, they, they can communicate, but they didn't have a lot of uh, vocabulary right. <laughs> and uh, they would walk by, they would point at the Apple store and they'd say, the fruit, fruit. Yeah, the fruit store. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. Fruit, fruit. But it was the Apple Store. They recognized that symbol without right. even actually knowing. And, think they, of, and that's the importance. Look, at, the, at a young age, they're being embedded in their brain what that symbol is and what it stands for. And they knew that their parent shop there, and they were happy, and the customer experience and the service, and they went there for reasons. So, again, having that brand is really, really important. And even in a negative economy, you know, people will go to a brand because they recognize it and they trust it. And uh, even if they, you know, they, they, they look at their funds and where they want to spend it, they'd rather spend it on something they trust, building a brand. And I'm all about brand the brand. Is. I'm mm -hmm. all about the brand. And, you know, this is something we actually really go in depth about talking about in our import success formula, because we teach you not only the ins and outs about sourcing and importing and private labeling, but we do actually go into branding, because branding is really important. You know, branding as a company or branding as a product, branding in general is just very, very important to build trust, to build customers, to and build drill, a business. And, and, exactly. Build a value to your company. So whether it be on uh, an e-commerce site or on Amazon, you want to make sure you're building that brand so people will follow you and follow that brand, whatever you come out with. And that way they know if you're selling, let's say, a product on Amazon, they know to look at your website and go to where it's sold in, in other places. Um, and then they'll, they'll follow you. They'll, if you have a Facebook, they'll want to know what other products you're coming out with. They'll want to know, uh, what other makes, you know what makes your products different from other companies. And again, it's all about that loyalty. It's all about building up the success uh, of your company and your products. And that's very important. And again, we teach that in our program um, so people know how to build that brand and make sure that they have a brand that people are going to follow. So we need to take a quick break here, but after the break, we will be talking more about brands. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman with the Private Label University here on 710 KNUS. News Talk 710 KNUS. 
Would an extra $1,000 a month, $5,000 a month, or even $10,000 a month help you live a better life? It doesn't have to stop there. People just like you are making thousands of dollars selling products on Amazon. The best part is, it's simple. All you need is a product. Karen and Neil Quartzman, creators of Private Label University, are here to show you how. How to find that perfect product so you can join millions of people and start making the money that everyone is talking about on Amazon. Private Label University unlocks 35 years of secrets about sourcing, importing, and private labeling products for big chain stores. Karen and Neil truly believe in you. So much that they'll invest $500 towards your tuition in the Private Label University program. The Import Success Formula. Go to Karen and Neil's website at privatelabeluniversity.com and enroll in the Import Success Formula program. Enter code PLU for $500 off your tuition of the program when paid in full. So what are you waiting for? Head over to privatelabeluniversity.com and sign up today. Some people hate doing their taxes, but they probably prefer it to identity thieves filing their taxes for them. Did you know that all identity thieves need to file a fake tax return is your social security number and your date of birth? It's that easy. Identity thieves can also use information from your tax documents to commit other crimes, like draining your bank accounts. Now, some people count on free credit monitoring for identity theft protection, but free credit monitoring won't do anything to help fix an identity theft problem. But LifeLock will. If you're a victim of identity theft, LifeLock's U.S.-based team of specialists will work to resolve your case, and you'll get peace of mind now and all year long. Memberships start at just $9.99 a month, plus applicable tax. Call 1-800-921-3820 or visit LifeLock.com now and use the promo code Prager, that's Prager, to save 10% on your membership. Call 800-921-3820, 800-921-3820. We now return to the Private Label University with your hosts, Karen and Neil Gordsman on News Talk 710 KNUS. For those of you who are just joining us, we are Karen and Neil Gordsman, and you are listening to the Private Label University on 710 KNUS, where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. So visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity, where we offer a ton of free content and where you will find our eight-week import success formula program. The formula to sourcing and importing products so you too can start selling products on Amazon or online and start making the money that everyone is talking about. And while you're over there on our website, leave us a message or a question and we'll answer it on the show. So we were just talking about branding and how powerful the uh, branding is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it really is. In this, in this economy, people are always looking to what they recognize, what they feel good about. Uh, you know, even the success of... You know, big names, dollar stores. Mm -hmm. Dollar stores are really worldwide. People think they're just in maybe America. They're in Canada. They're in Mexico. They're in China. They're in Germany. They're in Italy. I've been around the world, and I've always seen dollar stores. Are they they called the dollar store everywhere? Because I remember in Canada, it wasn't the dollar store, but it was the same economy. In China, they're called equi. (laughs) Equi. (laughs) No, but typically they're called a dollar store. You know, some of them have a 99-cent store, but um, something related to the dollar concept of selling Mm -hmm. an item for a dollar. and. You know, when you walk into these stores, uh, you know, they figured out a concept where they can offer inexpensive products that people need, utensils uh, or household goods um, that really had a low cost anyways and typically would be taken to, you know, other department stores or supermarkets and sold at a much higher price. And if they're only buying them for 10 cents on the dollar, they could sell them for a dollar all day long. And, again, it's it's a recognized company. It's it's on the stock market. It, it, uh so I didn't a, realize that it was it was an international company. Oh yeah, it's very very powerful. And there's factories now that have actually uh, set up their production just to produce products for the dollar store because they know which products have the highest turnover. So, so they private label their own stuff as well. They'll pri- exactly they private label a lot of different products um, for their brand for their stores. So but, kind of like Costco, what Costco does. Exactly. So exactly. the packaging might be different, but the name brand might be still mm-hmm. the same. Like a Sam's Club, you know, Sam's Club is owned by Walmart. Same type of thing. They take certain products that are in bulk and they uh, just sell them at a lower cost. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you when you talk about branding, you know, there's so many name brands out there. There's so many things that signifies a company and the value and people recognize. So what do you think the top five most valuable brands, not just recognized, but what do you think the top five mm-hmm. most valuable brands are internationally or worldwide? 
Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I, Apple for sure. Okay, Apple is actually it's number one. Oh, there on you the go. List. I'm good at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, valuable brand. I, at Facebook. Facebook is up there. It's actually number 20 on the list, oh, but it is up there. That's because you use it so fun. much. You think Maybe. it's, so, well, it's so valuable. Who doesn't, right? <laughs> wow. Okay. I would say Facebook. Um, McDonald's. We talked about McDonald's. Yes, McDonald's, sure. McDonald's. It's number four on the list. Okay. Yes. I might have to be in the top five. Come on, you, you've got two I more. I have to be in the top, yeah, top five. five. Oh, boy. Um, Starbucks. Starbucks. Starbucks is in the top 100. Oh, uh, It actually okay. didn't make the top five. It's number 52. It shows how 52. powerful. 52. Yeah, it shows how powerful. You know, you, you're thinking because maybe you like Starbucks, you, you notice it, but it's actually way down the list. Wow. Okay. So I have one more, right? One more guess. Um, uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is right up there. That's right. Uh, even, even, so how know, many did I even get right? Uh, you got a few right. <laughs> but so number one being Apple. Um, yeah. Three, well, uh, number two actually is, is Microsoft. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, then Coca-Cola and McDonald's, uh, those are in the top five. IBM mm-hmm. was actually number five. IBM. So it, it, it just proves you. Um, actually, number three, number three, I made it an error there. Number three is Google. Google, of Google. course. So Apple, Google. Microsoft, Google, Google, Coca-Cola, IBM. And Facebook is, what, what number again? No, number 20. Wow. Number 20. Okay. So, you know, you think of the power of Google. You know, yeah, every, you know, growing up, everyone would say, oh, look it up in the dictionary or go to a dictionary and check or go to I an always, encyclopedia. And I always tell the kids, go Google it. Go Google it's, it. It's a word. Right. It's, the brand is now living in, 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 my, in my mind. That's in, right. In my, it's tattooed in, our house. in your brain. Yeah. In everyone's <laughs> household. In um, even in schools, you know, uh, when, when you're meeting with a teacher and they say, well, I have to look up this and I have to check this and I need to reference this, Google it. And so it really is such a common name that it gives such huge value to that company um, that make it, again, a brand that everyone recognizes. Okay, so, so where's Amazon then in the, on the list? Amazon is way down there. Uh, oh. Amazon actually wasn't too bad. It's, it's actually 13. Oh. So that's not too bad. So, 13, so, so think hold of on this. a second. So it's, it's more popular than, it's more valuable than Facebook? It's more valuable than Facebook, yeah. Because think of Amazon wow. is an is the largest retailer in the world. And so you imagine they've built themselves up in only a matter of 15 years. They've built them up as such a strong um, influence on everyone's life. When you go shopping now, typically if you're going to go online, you don't have to go to a specific site or know a specific site. You just go to Amazon and you look for the product because they have almost everything on the list. So again, showing the value of looking at private labeling and branding a product. If you're going to launch a physical product or getting into the physical product business and you're going to launch it online, especially on Amazon, you better brand it. If you just make it a generic product, then, you know, anyone can copy it. Anyone can hijack it. Anyone can take over that product if they see that it's doing well. If you have a brand and you have everything trademarked uh, and associated with that brand, you own that brand. And Amazon uh, protects that through their brand registry. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to make sure that you go through the steps Um, And we tell people, you know, make sure you go through the brand registry on Amazon to protect yourself because if your brand takes off and all of a sudden you're making $10,000 or $100,000 a month or, you know, a million plus a year, you better have yourself protected because that shows huge value to the company. And, and then people at some look. time, and I people mean, there's, say, there's so many different um, apps out there and tools that we teach in our class for, mm-hmm. you know, our students to use when they're, you know, looking for products on, on Amazon to see what's successful Right. So people are going to be, you know, if you, you have a brand out there and you don't protect it or you're starting a brand and you're not protecting it, there's people using these tools, the tools that we teach our clients to, to right. look for profitable products. That's right. That, you know, products that are doing well on Amazon. So it's you like want to product make, trolls that are right? looking out there to see who and doesn't. We, we all do it we and we teach it. that too. Yeah. So it's important to be able to protect your brand. Another thing we teach to protect your brand, mm-hmm. and especially, you know, when you're selling on Amazon and Amazon does a great job teaching how to do that too mm-hmm. through and their we brand spend, registry. And we spend a whole section on branding and, and yeah. talking about branding and making sure you're private labeling the proper way to protect yourself. Because you can private label a product and if you're not branding it or you know making it yours, then it's, it's just out in the cloud. Yeah, it's, it's out in the cloud. <laughs> yeah, anyone can take over that product. So um, it's very important, again, looking at branding, uh, branding yourself, branding your product, branding your company. So I want to know what else was on that list. So you said you you had the top ten. I, I I'd like. To, I, I'm sure everyone's waiting. We uh, want to hear. General Electric was number nine. Uh, Toyota was number eight. Samsung uh, Samsung was number seven. Um, what was ten? Number ten. Let's you know go. What? Can you go through the list? I don't know if I have the whole list here. Okay. Uh, number ten. So Apple, Microsoft, Google. You said. Yeah. Coca Cola, IBM, McDonald's. 
Samsung, Toyota, GE, and Amazon was Amazon 13? number 13. Yes. <laughs> All right, so an incomplete list, but that's okay. <laughs> it was the top five the, that were most important. Those top five, but I was surprised yes, that I didn't even get it. A lot of the food companies were way down the list. Look at again, oh. Starbucks. Starbucks, yeah. which is so powerful, was number fifty-two. Yeah, I'm shocked. I thought for sure that would be a up lot of there. the car yes, companies but... were in the top one hundred. So, um, yeah, you know, a lot of the maybe Starbucks needs to be selling more coffee. Yeah, well, it, it's or improving their coffee or improving their coffee. <laughs> so you know, it, it's so, but the thing people is, people even brand themselves. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I was going to say that. See, it's, it's like we think <laughs> like there. Think there alike. you go. <laughs> um, branding's not just about branding a company or a product. It you can also brand a person. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's so many people that you know that now are branded. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at, um, you know, we can get political here. But, mm. We uh, don't always like to talk politics, but no, but I know that Hillary Clinton loves to brand herself. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'd like all, to brand her, too. <laughs> all, all, all the uh, bobblehead companies have gotten involved with branding and coming with bobbleheads of all the characters. And they say Hillary right. Clinton is one of the more popular ones. Oh, and actually, God. we met someone who decided to come up with a pen yeah. where you press the top of the pen Can and it has Hillary's annoying yeah, laugh. cackling laugh that goes on. And he's doing extremely well selling this pen. And so he decided that, you know, she's a figure that everyone recognizes, whether they like her or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like she's the most attractive woman out there and she doesn't dress the best the, you know, no. to other. However, she has some type of features that could be branded, whether it be in bobbleheads or T-shirts or these What's pens. What's the features? The obnoxious laugh. <laughs> and that laugh. Listen, and the they, bad they do choices. Apps, they do apps after that, after that exactly. laugh. So, Don't again, get that on your phone. And look at Donald <laughs> Trump. You know, people love to brand. Look at his haircut. You know, people, uh, <laughs> they recognize people. They already have masks with that hair. What's it called? The Trump cut? The, you know, you had the mullet. And now you have the Trump cut. So you, you, go. You, go, you go to your local barber shop and you say, give me the Trump cut. Right. Um, but here's a brand. He has a clothes brand. He has a tie brand. He has a shirt brand. The clothes brand? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he has, of course, his hotels. But he his, dresses his well. He always dresses well, very conservatively. Yeah. Um, not, nothing But uh, I want to go ordinary. back to that Hillary one. Yeah. I need to get that bobblehead <laughs> so I could just flick it. And just see every it moving. Time, every time she says the wrong thing, you can knock it on the I'll on be top flicking of the head. it every second. <laughs> and hear her screaming. <laughs> there you go. And now... <laughs> I mean, look, but look at... Okay, here again, Colorado. Colorado mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, we have Peyton Manning, who, um, you know, known as an you know, unbelievable football player, mm -hmm. now... Mentor. Yeah, and now, you know, transitioning from, you know, his going into retirement, transitioning into a, the Peyton Manning brand. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, who was the first person he kissed right after the Super Bowl? <laughs> it wasn't his wife. Yeah, it wasn't was his Papa wife. John. It was uh, someone from Papa John's. It was, was Papa John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out, of course, he has invested in the Papa John franchise. Yeah. He owns about 20 to 25 Good advertising. franchises. advertising. He's building that brand. Right. And people, when they think of pizza, they're going to think of Peyton Manning. They're going to think of Papa John's. So it's it's great for the company. It's or great Budweiser. For or... <laughs> Budweiser, yeah. Remember he said he, the first thing he's going to do is relax and grab a Budweiser. Uh, so, again, building up a brand. But, you know, Peyton Manning, look at John Elway. Exactly. John Elway is a brand. You know, you see, oh, his, you see him on all, the, bill, yeah, all mm -hmm. the billboards have his face, uh, whether it be for teeth whitening or laser eye surgery. He's involved with so many things, you know, cars, and you know, he's got his own restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a great success story. Not only being a great athlete, he's a great success story. So people look at that because when they see John Elway, they oh, it must be good. It's connected with John Elway. Peyton Manning, he's just going to, it's going to go through the roof. So Absolutely. with him, his face, whether they put it on a football or a shirt or a restaurant, whether it be fast food or high end, people are going to be drawn to that. So that's going to be, you know, it, it just shows Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Think of Michael Jordan. I always I, think I, of, you I know, think the little, Nike. I you, just think Nike. Right. And his face, that little tattoo of the guy jumping in the air with the basketball, yeah. you know, it, it's that little, that similar, or, or say, or not a about, tattoo, or, but I've seen them in tattoos. Or what about George Foreman? George Foreman. Which you uh, which my, enlightened which me. Which Karen and... thought was a, a chef. He <laughs> thought he was a, a barbecue expert. And I said, no, he's a boxer. He's a famous not. boxer. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people, you know, people growing, kids today but don't I know. know. No. They recognize George Foreman with a grill. They think maybe he's. I I think he's, he's the grill a, man. He's a grill man. <laughs> right? But here's an example of someone who got behind a product and uh, was connected with the labeling and the branding and made it, a, again, into a billion-dollar industry. And 
Uh, you know, George, loving his burgers and loving his cheeseburgers, said, you know, you got to buy this. I love eating burgers, and you can make the greatest burgers. And He sold on – I got sold on that. Sold the young and the old. So people who recognize him as being one of the greatest boxers who ever lived to – Did you like know yourself. that? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> So I it, just know from yeah, Home Shopping Network, QVC, it, and, late you know, night TV, and, and I, it's George Foreman. He's the grill man. Yeah, you gotta get his grill. No, he is a professional boxer. So you can see how many, how so many athletes uh, get behind a product, and they're able to brand again. And the companies who come out with those products uh, see the possibility of branding it with their name. So with John Elway, with Peyton Manning, he'll, he'll become the new poster boy for Colorado where you have him on so many products. Maybe it'll be again, he'll be doing it for teeth whitening or some doctor's office or, um, I don't know, maybe they're going to name a new haircut after him. Uh, um, I don't What's think it's, it I don't the know, Manning <laughs> the Manning cut. But again, a, per, a perfect example of branding. So we need to take a quick break. We will be right back. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman with the Private Label University here at 710 KNUS. ABC News, I'm Mona Rivera. A deadly derailment. Two people are dead, more than two dozen injured, after an Amtrak passenger train derailed south of Philadelphia this morning. ABC's Trish Hartman is near the scene. I spoke with a man on the phone whose 52-year-old mother was on the train. She was on her way from New York City to her home in Maryland. He said she has injuries to her knees, head, and back, but he was able to talk to her on the phone. She told him it was a very scary and chaotic scene. Amtrak has suspended service on the Northeast Corridor as a result of this deadly derailment, which apparently happened when the train hit a backhoe on the tracks. The airport in Brussels reopened today with three symbolic flights, first flight since the suicide bombings nearly two weeks ago. Jazz great Gatto Barbieri has passed away. His wife says the famous trumpet player and composer died after a bout with pneumonia. He was 83. An earthquake in the South Pacific this morning had a magnitude of 6.9. No reports of damage or injuries. This is ABC News. KNUS News Talk 710. Are you a responsible person who finds yourself growing deeper and deeper in credit card debt and you're not sure how to fix the problem? Then get ready for a toll-free number that will put you on a path to financial recovery. Trinity Debt Management is a non-profit organization that will consolidate your accounts into one easy-to-manage monthly payment. Put a stop to late fees and over-limit charges and reduce your interest rates by as much as 60%. You'll save thousands and become debt-free for keeps. It's not a loan. It's a smart way to relieve your stress, meet your obligations, and preserve your self-respect. If your debt has you down, we should talk. Gather up your bills and call this toll-free number for a free, no-obligation debt analysis. 1-800-990-6976. That's 1-800-990-6976. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-990-6976. If you're looking for quality betting at the best value, listen up. I love getting a bargain as much as the next person, but there are some things I'm willing to spend the extra money on. And my betting is at the top of that list. I used to think, what does it matter? I'm sleeping anyway. But once I tried the thecompanystore.com, I got it. It was just a whole new level of comfort I didn't know existed. See, the company store has been around for over 100 years. So they've really perfected what it takes to make the finest quality betting. And other home goods, too. All for the best price. They're not trying to be the cheapest. You get what you pay for. They're the best value. And there's a difference. They believe in using natural products and only the best cotton. So they not only set the bar for comfort, they last. See the quality for yourself. Visit thecompanystore.com and try any of our products risk-free. Log on now, enter the code VALUE, and get 15% off your order plus free shipping. Thecompanystore.com. We're all about comfort. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I wanted to share some of my experiences with GoSober. I am a business owner uh, here in Colorado and had been thinking about going sober literally for about four years. One of my biggest choices about going with Go Sober was that I'm a pretty private person, and when my alcohol addiction started, it started very privately. And when my rehabilitation started with Go Sober, it allowed me to rehabilitate privately and have Having the flexibility of not having to go into a treatment program, going away, away from my family, away from my job. The infusions allowed me to put a reset button on loving myself again. My first infusion, I could go right past that neighborhood liquor store and not even think about 
stopping in and grabbing a bottle of wine. What's next for me is rediscovering all those things that I've I've lost. Call Go Sober at 303-827-4837 or visit their website at gosober.org. Private Label University with your hosts, Karen and Neil Gorsman on News Talk 710 KNUS. Welcome back. You are listening to Karen and Neil Gorsman, the Private Label University on 710 KNUS. So we were just talking about branding and brands and why it's so important when you're building up a business online or in retail or in Amazon that you're cons- that you consider building a brand around your product that you sell. And this is one thing that we really, really emphasize in our eight-week import success formula program because that really is where the money is. It's all about private labeling. It's all about branding. So actually, if you want a sneak peek, go over to our website And if you hit the freebie tab, you're going to see we have a free boot camp. It's over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com. So you're going to click the tab freebies, and you'll see the fast track boot camp to private labeling. And you're going to love this because, well, it's free. We love free. We love free. And it's amazing. So for five days, you're going to get the secrets and the steps to private labeling. Each day, you're going to get a video from Neil and I and share with where we're going to share with you the secrets to private labeling products and selling them on Amazon. So make sure you grab this free course. It's free. So we're giving this to you. Go over to our website. Did you hear that? It's free. <laughs> www.privatelabeluniversity.com. And this is actually really great because it's going to give you um, uh, some content to be able to use to start private labeling a product or at least learn about it Mm -hmm. and see why it's so important and where, you know, that buzz is. Everyone's talking about Amazon and how they're making a ton of money on Amazon. So this will give you kind of a good... uh, Sneak peek. And we're getting amazing feedback internationally from reviews people that have taken this free course just to get the basics and know the basics when they're uh, launching a physical product business. And especially if you if you plan on taking it to Amazon, which a lot of our clients and a lot of our students do. And a lot of the retailers are now doing. A lot of retailers are, you know, we, we can see where it's coming from. And if they happen to mention their company, we see they're, they're already, re, you know, uh, they've been in business for a while. These are established retailers who have brick and mortar stores who want to learn more. Uh, and How to have, get onto Amazon or how to source for better Pricing. Better I mean, pricing and more about? products too. Mm-hmm. More products. You know, a lot of times uh, retailers are kind of caught in a trap of where they can buy from and who they can buy from and how they can buy. And they don't realize that there's a lot more opportunity to change your business. You know, business is changing all the time. And we tell our students that you really have to think outside of the box. And a lot of retailers who have, uh, you know, basically handled their business the same way for 25 years, it's changing now. And with the likes of Amazon and other e commerce sites, they're, they're making that change, and if you don't get into that path of evolving, then you're, you're going to be stagnant. You're going to be left behind. You're going to be left behind, and it's very important as we talk about branding and private labeling. And um, I love the topic of branding. It really excites me. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I, like, I love branding. Like That's my, my specialty, I think. I love that part. Well, you see people that are being so success, successful with branding products and even simple things. You know, when you walk through... I think of our clients that we have and how successful they've been on Amazon and and in retail. Mm-hmm. And, and, and our clients that have taken our program or um, we've mentored or been in part of our, our mastermind programs who learn so much about branding and private labeling that they never even thought about. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all this new information that, again, is coming out into the industries all the time. But, again, it's our experience for doing this for over 30 years um, of handling that and making uh, customers aware and making sure that their customers are aware and, again, teaching and educating uh, brick and mortar store owners, retailers, as well as again people starting physical product businesses to launch them on Amazon to be aware of what they can do to make themselves more money. And I think that's the key is going with what the time is showing and where everything's moving. Like, and I'm going to use Facebook as an example because really it was it's a directory, mm-hmm. and we used to go through you know directories whether it's catalogs or you know paper. It was all paper directories, and everything moving now to the internet. 
brought the directories to the internet through really it's Facebook. Right. You know, that's where you you access your people, you access your groups, you network, you you know, it's just become so much more. Mm-hmm. It, it's a it's a I guess a worldwide place to advertise, especially again if you're private labeling or branding a product or yourself, you can reach out to millions and millions of people. Right, but Facebook itself is a brand. Facebook is a brand, right? I mean, where and, do you find people? Do you go into your old directory? No, you anymore. go to Facebook. Right. Let's see if they're on Facebook. Right. Or let's see if they're on a, you know, different social media. LinkedIn. LinkedIn's another popular one for for corporate people and business people. But yeah, Facebook really is kind of the go-to place to find people. So what to was see, it see before what people Facebook? Are talking about. What was it before Facebook? Um, a Rolodex? <laughs> no. no. I mean like the first online <laughs> Rolodex, I guess you'd say. Uh, MySpace. 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 That's, right. that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And MySpace, I guess, a thing of the past. Um, well, Facebook just exploded. Right. And with Facebook, now you have, uh, you know, everyone who sees something that they like or they have something that they've created, an inventor or an entrepreneur who's starting a business, and they say, hey, look what I've just launched. Do you like it? You know, kind of reaching out to the world. Typically, they're doing it for their friends, but they're really exposing it to the world. Everyone. And they get millions of people contacting and saying, where can I get one of those? Or where is it sold? Oh, it's sold on Amazon. Or it's sold in this retail store. Or it's sold from my garage. And then, again, we help promote and we, we educate people who are starting physical product businesses to get it launched on Amazon. Because, again, being the largest retailer in the world, that's the place you want to gravitate to to make a ton of money. Mm-hmm. And that's what their brand is, I guess, now, is the largest retailer in the world. Right. And and, right? and, and the like, same thing. Place. So it doesn't have to be a necessary tangible thing. It could be something even digital that becomes a brand. You know, Facebook is not a tangible thing that you buy. Right. right. right? It's, it's, it's a digital thing. Same thing with um, – uh, Amazon, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, Amazon. You want to buy something? Where do you? you know, but it's, or, it's, you're looking the, to buy it's the something, brand of Amazon. It's the brand of Amazon. Correct. So, and you know what you're going to get, whether you're a seller or whether you're buying something. You know what that Amazon stands for. Just what? like you, when you said you go, you know, going into the Apple store, right? You know, Apple. Like, so mm-hmm. what computer would you buy? Would you buy an Apple or would you buy? I don't know what's another brand. <laughs> I guess I'm an, a- I'm an Toshiba, Apple. Toshiba, Sony, <laughs> right. so IBM, what would you Lenovo. Buy, right? Yeah, yes. I think it, it, these days it's kind of the go-to computer for the um, the easiest uh, computer it's the to brand. use. It's, it's, it's the, the brand. brand that they right. built around a computer. It's a computer, right? right. It's a be- brand well, think, so that it a- makes life for the consumer just easier. You know what you're going to get with every single Apple product. Mm-hmm. And Well, Steve Jobs, I think that's what he that, – those were that was his vision. Those were his plans. He wanted to create a product that people were loyal to and they recognized and they followed. And he, he wanted to make sure that you felt good when you bought his product. Even though it was more expensive than the other products, you were going to walk away and not have any worries. You were going to feel comfortable. And then as he progressed with other products, you're going to say, well, the other product was so good, I can't lose buying another Apple product. And I think you know, the great thing is Steve Jobs' vision is just going to be carried on because people do follow the Apple concept. They want to know what's going to come out. It's they want all to about know, the brand. It's all about the brand. Well, they look, talk I about talk, the Apple car right? coming up. Oh, my God. What are they going to think of next? You, know, you get in your car but, and you say, call so-and-so or you know, drive her on, take me here. Take yeah, me to all, Apple. Right. Take, take me to the <laughs> Apple store. So but it's that, the same thing with clothes, too. I mean, we talked about in, in, in a few episodes I, I, that we've had that, you know, I'm, I like the brand names mm-hmm. because of that, because I know what I'm getting. Um, same thing with clothes. We talked about my, my Jimmy Choo's, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about, you know, just knowing the, what I'm going to get. The well, same thing look, with... Look at shirts. You know, not that I'm big into fashion, but I remember growing up and you'd see, you know, the rich kids had the uh, the little alligator on their shirts or, or, you know, people who had really nice clothes might have had that little polo on their shirt, the polo man. And so you recognize, wow, that's really high end. It's really good quality. Or Lacoste. Uh, Lacoste. So that little, little alligator. alligator. Everyone loved that. that. Little you know, alligator. nice shirts. Um, uh, plain colors, but, you know, it, it's something that you recognize and typically went with good quality. Well, now, like, there's a Vineyard Vines. Now, that's where a... I get confused because <laughs> I thought Vineyard Vines, when I saw it on the credit card, I thought she, my wife was, Karen here, was ordering a lot more wine, and <laughs> and it turns out it's clothes yes. and it's accessories. And um, I guess when I looked on the back. But it's very hip now, at least. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's. I don't, I don't know the if it's. The kids are all talking about it. The kids are talking about it. Our kids are talking yeah. about it. <laughs> when they showed an older gentleman wearing red pants and a green jacket and a purple tie. I don't know if it's really my color scheme, but um, it's these days it's, yeah, it's people are talking about it in the fashion industry. 
Um, and it's a, a big brand, much like L.L. Bean used to be years ago. Yeah, similar. Very popular. Mm -hmm. um, Vineyard Vines seems to be very well recognized. Absolutely. So, Louis well, Vuitton. Oh, I love Louis Vuitton. Yeah, you know, you see all those bags with Louis Vuitton. And go, but wow. you know what you're getting. Yeah. When you hear the name, you know what you're getting. Right. Right, and, that, and that's the importance again of branding. And you even know what you're getting. Oh, yeah. No, if you see, you know, the Louis Vuitton, you go, that must be a good bag. And usually there's backing behind it. They give warranties and guarantees. So let's take a quick break, and we will be right back. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman with Cons Private Label University here at 710 KNUS. KNUS. News Talk 710. Would an extra $1,000 a month, $5,000 a month, or even $10,000 a month help you live a better life? It doesn't have to stop there. People just like you are making thousands of dollars selling products on Amazon. The best part is it's simple. All you need is a product. Karen and Neil Quartzman, creators of Private Label University, are here to show you how. How to find that perfect product so you can join millions of people and start making the money that everyone is talking about on Amazon. Private Label University unlocks 30 35 years of secrets about sourcing, importing, and private labeling products for big chain stores. Karen and Neil truly believe in you. So much that they'll invest $500 towards your tuition in the Private Label University program, the Import Success Formula. Go to Karen and Neil's website at privatelabeluniversity.com and enroll in the Import Success Formula program. Enter code PLU for $500 off your tuition of the program when paid in full. So what are you waiting for? Head over to privatelabeluniversity.com and sign up today. Is it time to remodel that outdated kitchen? I'm Ted Spear, co-owner of All About Cabinets and Countertops at 35th and Wadsworth. And for the past nine years, I've been telling you how we've saved our customers thousands of dollars on their kitchen and bathroom projects, even over those big box stores. And now I invite you to come check out our showroom and experience our unique mix of top-of-the-line customer service, quality products, and tremendous value. Come check out our full line of home crest cabinetry. And as always, we upgrade all our home crest cabinets to the latest in anti-slam technology for free. Need to remodel that bathroom? We are blowing out all our in-stock vanity cabinets and granite countertops. These prices are incredibly low, so don't wait. We've extended all our current specials through April, so there's never been a better time to get started. You can visit our showroom or call us today, 303-456-6400. That's 303-456-6400. Also, to view all our current specials, visit our website at allaboutgreatdeals.com. Make a difference without the expense with All About Cabinets and countertops we now return to the private label university with your hosts karen and neil gortzman on news talk 710 knus welcome back from the break you are listening to karen and neil gortzman the private label university here at 710 knus where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success so visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com where we offer a ton of free content and where you will find our eight-week import success formula program, the program that will give you the step-by-step -step process to sourcing and importing and private labeling a product so you can start selling on Amazon or online and start making the money that you're supposed to be making. And that's important, making the money you're supposed to be making. So if you're going to launch a product and you're going to private label, which we always promote, branding that product, the, again, the importance of branding a product, we want to hear from you. Um, you know, let us know what your favorite brand is. If you're persuaded by a brand, uh, or when you're out there and you specifically gravitate to buying a spe specific brand, we want to know about it. Just like me, I love. Like, I'm always you're persuaded. I'm, I'm. I am. I can admit. I'm all. I'm all about the brand. Mm -hmm. And it, it's. You know, it, in some cases, the brand typically, since people know if they're looking for a brand, that sometimes it goes with a higher price. Uh, and again, the manufacturers know that, okay, if we slap Louis Vuitton on a spatula, that they may want to buy it because it's going to be a Louis Vuitton. I love to talk about, you know, Apple. If Apple was to take a, a silicone spatula, same one that's from a manufacturer, sold in a dollar store for a dollar, but Apple slaps an Apple symbol and sells it in their Apple stores maybe to clean your screen or, or, or some part of your people's, and, and then they put you a price of twenty nine ninety nine. It's the same dollar spatula. But because it's in the Apple store, it has the Apple symbol. You're paying they, for the name. You're paying for that name and you're the brand. You're paying for, for the, the brand. brand. And, and what you're going to get with it. Right. Absolutely. So then when I start shopping for all my brands, 
You're going to support me, right? No, I, I'm going to say go to the dollar store and find the same thing <laughs> because that spatula is probably the same factory that's making it for Apple as making it for the dollar store. <laughs> so you can buy 10 of them. <laughs> and, and again, and that's, that's, a, that's a show in itself. I mean, how many times do you tell me that when, you know, you're overseas, you know, sourcing for things, you're like, you know, the thing that you just bought for, you know, whatever it was, uh, hundreds of dollars, I, it's here, it's 39 cents. That's right. And I see that all the time when, when I'm in China. Uh, or any part of Asia, whether it be in even Korea or Taiwan, um, I see so many products that are made or branded for the big chain stores. And that's why, you know, we really promote, we offer uh, a trip to China mm -hmm. where we take clients, we take our students, um, and they sign up to take, it's almost like a course in itself because we teach them how to do business in China and in Asia. How to uh, source, how to import, how to find suppliers and manufacturers, how to private label and then how to bring it over. And how to bring it over. That's right. How to import into the country and then, of course, launch your physical product business. So whether, uh, again, you go right to Amazon to sell your product or you're going to start an online website or you plan on selling it to retail stores in the future, um, learning how to source those products, learning how to import those products, learning where to get the best price from. You know, wouldn't it be a great thing if you walked into a, a place and you, it was the same fact that it's making spatulas for, you know, the, the name brands or, or a big company? So... You know, we do that a few times a year, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an it's the amazing... It's Canton Fair in April and then again in October. That's right. Next month, we're heading over there with, uh, with, with 15 clients, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's so important to do that. So we, we really teach them the basics. Also, when we talk about branding, you know, we, we say how... Well, I, might, I, I think you should... I think when we actually, when you say branding, I, I, I want to see the other side to this. So let, I want you to talk about your Starbucks experience. What are your thoughts on Starbucks? It's a big brand. Because mm -hmm. you know my thoughts on it. So well, I, 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 what are I, your I, thoughts on, on Starbucks? Cause, and I say this because you like coffee, but you hate coffee. You kind of have this like war with coffee. I have that love and hate relationship with coffee. I love the smell of coffee. I love the, I guess, the whole routine of, you know, you get the coffee and you open the top and the smell and adding your own cream and sugar. Uh, I, I never ask for them to add it. I always want to do it myself. And you um, get so irritated when I say, like, oh, I'm just going to go to Starbucks. And you go, why would you be going to Starbucks to buy coffee? The co you know, you well, have usually your... you don't even buy coffee at Starbucks. No, I don't. Well, because I don't drink coffee. Right. So but what do you whole, get at Starbucks? It's just it's the whole thing. It's about the brand. So instead of saying, I'm going for coffee or I'm going for tea because I get my, when I, when I get it. Do you want a Starbucks? I buy, so I, buy, a... I buy my chai tea latte, right? So I go to Starbucks. They do have the best chai tea latte. So when I say, when I use the word Starbucks, like, oh, I'm going over Starbucks or I'm meeting a friend at Starbucks, it's all about, it's just about the, the relationship. It's about, like, going the for experience. coffee. It's about right. It's saying going to coffee or Googling it. It's the same thing. So right, it doesn't I... mean that I have to be drinking coffee when I'm there. Right. You could be having any type of drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a term like, hey, do you want to meet at Starbucks? It means, hey, do you want to meet for coffee? Hey, do you want to get together? Yeah. That's what kind of for what me, it means. Again, it's a brand. Starbucks to me is more than coffee. Right. For you, it's a social experience. Yeah. You're, you're hanging out with your friends. For me, I want a coffee for performance. Right, I want a coffee for... People think Starbucks, they think coffee. You don't think tea or you don't think hamburgers. No, no, it's no. Coffee. It, right, right. But if I, I don't particularly like the coffee at Starbucks. I, know, I find it I much too strong. And even when someone comes back, hey, we got you a Starbucks coffee, it's like, but what's, yet you what's still it going to take the like word time? Starbucks? Oh, are you going to Starbucks? So you go, right? Because, so because again, the again brand it's is about there. the brand, right. it's about built what up so it is. Much. You know, I'd rather walk into uh, a Starbucks and say, can I get a small coffee? Instead, they put you through the whole routine of, would you like a grande, a venti? I'm not, you know, if I'm in Italy, I, I'll order a grande or a vente. I don't want the, I just want to say, when I walk into a, a Starbucks here, can I have a small coffee? Oh, which size would you like? <laughs> the small cup? You mean the vente, the grande? They keep going on and on about it. It's the That's, experience. It's right. all about that Starbucks brand, the and for, Starbucks experience. Yeah, for me, it just doesn't It doesn't work. I, I'd rather go to Italy and order that vente. Okay, cafe. then take me with you. Yeah. I'm game. I'll go to Italy. <laughs> but again, like you mentioned, the brand has such power. Exactly. And the label has such power. When people walk down the street and they see that green symbol with these, the, the Starbucks symbol, the logo, so you, even know, you it. know what it is. You, exactly. when, when you're pulling around, you can smell it. And, and most of their places, they look the same. Even, you know, I've been to Starbucks around the world, and they typically look the same. So, you know, that's, that's why it's the brand is so important. So we have some questions. So let's actually just jump right into question time. It's question time with your dynamic duo hosts, Karen and Neil Gorsman. What's your billion dollar question? All 
All right, Neil, put your tights back on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fold in my cape. <laughs> exactly. Those glasses. Love that. <laughs> so we have some questions. Actually, here's one from um, Jacqueline from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Wow. What is the difference between an SRP and an MSRP? Mm, great question, Jacqueline. Um, so in the retail side of, of business uh, and commerce, when you buy a product, typically it has a selling price or an SRP, which stands for suggested retail price. An MSRP actually just stands for a manufacturer's suggested retail price. Um, typically, they're just fictitious prices. They're, they're, uh, it's a, an amount, it's a value that's given based on how much a store can discount it or how much they want to discount it and put it on sale. So when you walk in, it says 50% off. Well, it's 50% off of what? It's usually their stamped SRP and MSRP. Um, so there really isn't a difference. Typically, it used to be manufacturers who sold products directly to retailers. They set an MSRP so that retailer could then advertise it and then discount from that or put it in a catalog. So it would be much the same. All retailers would have the same MSRP. Once you had people who private labeled products, then, of course, they would just set an SRP because it wasn't coming from the manufacturer. It was someone maybe who sourced a product or who bought a product for arbitrage to sell it online. And so what they did was they set a price so they can then knock down the price. So and really do people much still, you, are they using that? They do, unfortunately. You know, they use it as a ploy. It's a way to attract customers. So they, you know, they'll, you'll walk into a store where they have, you know, all items are $99 but 50% off. Oh, well, you always say <clears> that. Always when I when I go shopping and one of my children, either Bryn or Brayden or, or, or Karen, says, "Hey, they're having a huge sale. It's fifty percent off," and I say, "Fifty percent off of what? Of what? Off of a price that they made up in the store again, so they can get big big discounts." So I hope that answers your question, Jacqueline. Um, really, they're much the same. It's just a price that uh, stores retailers use or online companies to knock down a price. Mm -hmm. That was a great question. Good, very good question. I had um, to, and I did not know that. And we have another question. Um, we do. And this is from Chris in Boulder. Is it easy to buy products in China? Hmm. Well, that's, um, that's a loaded question. Um, yes, I guess the simplest answer is yes, it's easy to buy products in China. Um, what you have to look at is, is it a difficult process to uh, bring them in, um, to look at the product, to know what you're getting? Uh, and, of course, that's what we teach in our program. Uh, how people can source and buy products in China. So really, is, is it an easy way to buy products? You know, there's many different sites that you can go to. Uh, there's Alibaba, AliExpress, a lot of online sites from Asia that offer products to people around the world to buy the products. And so, you know, anyone can go to those sites. They can try to communicate and contact these places and buy a product, of course. Then you have customs and you have logistics and you have shipping companies. There's a lot more behind it. So is it easy? Um, I wouldn't say it's that easy. You have to have uh, procedures in place to know what you're doing, uh, to make sure that you're not breaking any laws or any rules and regulations. Um, but people try it every day. Um, are a lot of people successful? I know people who take our program are very successful at and importing products. And we have our products. China sourcing trip. And our China sourcing trip, which is, yeah, even more um, uh, opens the opportunity to do business overseas. And with that, it allows them to see how business is being done in China uh, and see, the, you know, what it's like to, to buy products from China. So, uh, I, I, you know, I hope, Chris, that answers your question. Is it easy? Well, it's uh, uh, it's not always the easiest process, but you have to know what you're doing. So. What are some typical things that could come up? Well, someone buys a product, and let's say it's not allowed in the U.S. Um, there, there's rules and regulations. Let's say, I know, garlic. Uh, someone wants to start importing garlic to make you know, some type of salve or some type of makeup or some type of food, um, you can't just import garlic freely. Um, it, it follows under certain guidelines where uh, the government says you can't bring in this amount of garlic. Um, if there's certain, um, for example, ball bearings, again, fall into a specific category that you can't just bring them into, you know, if someone's building skateboard wheels or certain products that uses them, you have to follow certain regulations. You have to get... And that's um, the key, following the right. regulations. So, again, we talk a lot about this in our program and when we take people to China through our sourcing trip. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually wrap up our show for today. We are Karen and Neil Gortzman, the Private Label University, where we unlock the secrets each week to your online selling success. 
We want you to know that the Private Label University was made for you, for the entrepreneur who is really ready to release that entrepreneur in yourself, so to spend more time with your loved ones and ready to make some serious money doing what you love to do. So join us each week at the Private Label University here at 710 KNUS, Sundays at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. We entrepreneurs, we need to band together and we need to support each other. There's enough success to go around. And how much more fun would it be if we could do it together? So please visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com. That's privatelabeluniversity.com where we offer a ton of free content. And don't forget to check out our eight-week import success formula program, the formula to sourcing and importing products so you can start selling products on Amazon or online and start making the money that everyone is talking about. And while you're over there on our website, leave us a message or a question and we'll answer it on our show. So we will see you next week. That's right? right. And so, again, leave your questions. And, again, if you find something amazing on Amazon that you've bought, let us know about it. We'll talk about it on the show. We love to hear about new products. So let us know anything that you find on Amazon. Perfect. We'll see you next week. See you then. I want to be a billionaire. So freaking bad. Thank you for joining Karen and Neil Gortzman at 710 KNUS, the private label university, the only show that dares to unlock the secrets to your online selling success so you can start making money and living your dreams. Remember to visit us over at www.privatelabeluniversity.com for tons of free content. While you're there, leave us a message and we'll air your comments and questions on the show. Listen to us every Sunday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. The dynamic duo, Karen and Neil are now signing off.